was walking with a group of prisoners back to their cells for lockup after dinner. Get hit by uh, inside of the face, bo boiling uh, fluid of some kind. Blinded me. Still went to the hospital. Still have burns, second degree, collar, shoulder. I was uh, lucky as hell that uh, another guard was coming the other direction of the prisoners, and my group could have torn me apart. Turns out what happened was uh, this one prisoner, fucking maggot, uh, for good behavior, got use of a hot plate, boiled his own piss, and threw it at me. Uh, um, let's just say uh, what goes around comes around. This one was cute. Uh, one Easter morning, this one prisoner decides uh, he wants to celebrate by uh, stripping down naked, slathering himself up with soap, taking a toilet brush, shoving it up his ass, and just the bristles are sticking out of his bunny tail. Um, jumps around on the floor yelling, he's the Easter bunny. Uh, a bunch of guards had to uh, wrestle him down because of the soap, everybody slipped, and uh, well, the uh, handle kind of fucked up his colon. But they, uh, you know. It was cute. Yeah, there was one, this one prisoner, uh, older Asian guy, didn't speak English too good. Um, he uh, beat his head against the cell wall, uh, went to the infirmary, and uh, well, he was able to communicate that he did want to get flown to the hospital in New York. Well, I have no idea. But, uh, they were able to suture it up, throw him in a padded cell. He was pissed. He uh, took out his dentures, and the fucker uh, worked the wound and peeled back the, the skin till he had like three, four inches of his fucking skull exposed. It's just, I mean, I've seen a lot of sick stuff, but it was pretty gross. Uh, that uh, fucker got what he wanted. <laughs> Dumb shit. One sick fuck who was uh, HIV positive, and he would uh, fill pens with his blood, try to stab other prisoners or guards, and blow into it to uh, you know help from infecting them. He was in the infirmary one night and uh, broke out one of those long fluorescent tube light bulbs, started cutting himself all over, and uh, the, the other uh, the infirmary workers and the guards just locked the door and told him to. Do it. Uh, clean himself off in the uh, the shower. He didn't. Bled out after a few hours. There's blood everywhere. Um, it was an investigation. No, nobody got fired or anything. I mean, who can blame anyone for uh, not wanting to get infected by HIV by some fucking psychopath? It's uh, sad. How desperate uh, meth addicts can get. I mean, uh, I've seen a lot of sick shit in the time I worked, but the one thing I could never get over was uh, um, new meth head would uh, be introduced to the population, and the others, uh, what they would do is uh, they didn't even open the wounds, they'd lick them in the hope of finding any uh, trace drugs. Of course, if uh, that prisoner didn't have any. Uh, open wounds, uh, well, the others, uh, they'd improvise, they could get uh, pretty creative. I had this uh, one kid, smart kid, it's, uh, in solitary. Every time the guards would walk by, they'd smell cigarette smoke. Now, cigarettes, lighters are prohibited in solitary. So the guards would go in, search the, search the cell, nothing. Uh, did it again, again, finally they just move him to another cell. They uh, say they're going to tear the first one apart. He says, good luck, you're not going to find anything. Um, they go in, they tear it apart. Uh, best they could figure out is he was lighting the cigarettes uh, using the, uh, the light socket. Uh, how he was getting the cigarettes, never figured out. But uh, the one thing they did find was a note that said, I told you you wouldn't find a fucking thing. Uh, you know, the other guards and, and I, uh, we laugh at uh, 
some things that uh, you know other people uh, might not find funny, but uh, <laughs> what can I say? Some funny shit happens, and you know the job it, uh, it changes you. Uh, so one time, one of the other guards is uh, walking along the first thing you know, the main floor, and then there's this huge thump. What happened is this uh, one drama queen decides uh, he's going to end it all. He ties a bunch of sheets together, you know, one on around his neck and the other to the railing on the second floor. Jumps off, but the <laughs> moron used one sheet too many. Hit the ground hard. <laughs> Everyone burst out laughing. Uh, but, uh, you know, that guy, uh, not so much. most disturbing thing about one of the inmates was how funny he was. Funny. The jailers kept laughing at his jokes, forgetting, and then they'd remember, oh yeah, he's in here because he sexually assaulted his daughter and buried her in concrete. Two prisoners tried to kill a third prisoner with a broomstick, but the shaft broke, so they took a pen and they put it in his ear and they stepped on it and it came out through his mouth. <laughs> and he survived. He survived. Hey, calm down. Because they're amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> Some interesting stories I heard while serving time in California. Oh, oh, one inmate tore out his colostomy bag in the shower. He did not survive. Oh, another inmate, oh, another inmate, another inmate, another inmate didn't want to be a man anymore. So he tried to cut off his penis, but he tried to stop halfway through because he couldn't survive the pain. Oh, oh, oh. And this other inmate, he was raped so hard, so hard, that he couldn't control his bowel movements. <laughs> One gang member beat up another gang member for snitching. I heard that scream. They heated up plastic drinking caps to burn off the gang tattoo on his forehead. And it was so bad that it got infected and it was so serious, they took him away and I never saw him again. <laughs> so I was doing time in Utah and they put me in this special part of the prison for inmates that they suspect are having nervous breakdowns. Anyway, it was right next to the nurse's station, and it was Valentine's Day, and the nurse on duty was this pretty little 20s, 30s young something named Margot. Her earlobes were phenomenal. Anyway, it was Valentine's Day, and I was just sitting there, and she runs out of the infirmary, and a guard tries to ask her what's wrong, and she just runs right to the bathroom. Turns out, one of the inmates had taken his shit and written on his cell window, Margo be my Valentine, with a big heart around it. <sighs> so romantic. Well, this story I heard from another nurse in the infirmary, Janet, because we tell each other everything. So she had, for about a month, inmates in 4C that tested positive for opiates. Clearly they were on something. 
that they were not prescribed. So the guards search the cell and everyone in it and they find nothing. Well, two weeks later, Janet sees one of the inmates licking the crayon off of a picture from one of his kids. Turns out, two of the wives had been crushing up pills and dyeing it with food coloring and using that to color children's pictures to make it look like children had painted those pictures. But I could have told Janet that children did not paint those pictures. <laughs> We had this one guy in our cell block who cut off his kneecap and used it as an ashtray. Smoking will kill you. And that wasn't even the weirdest thing that he did. A few years later, he cut off a little piece of meat from his hip and mailed it to the state's corrections commissioner with a letter stating that he would be set free even if he had to mail himself out piece by piece. The commissioner also had a sense of humor and he was a real stickler for the rules. So he added a few years onto his sentence, which is technically correct because you are considered an escapee even if you have one pinky outside of the fence. Thank you.